The vertebrate ear relies on a type of cell known as a hair cell, which is a modified mechanoreceptor in order to detect sound, to detect balance, acceleration, and the downward pull of gravity. Hair cells utilize a large modified sensory cilium called a kinocilium, which interacts with stiffened microvilli known as stereocilia. These structures are not unique to vertebrates. Cilia evolved in early eukaryotes, and many invertebrate animals use specialized regions possessing kinocilia and stereocilia as mechanoreceptors. Even though no ab protostome has true hair cells, the genes expressed in sensory structures can be so homologous that mutations in the same genes can cause deafness in both fruit flies and humans. Tunicates, which are primitive chordates, possess actual hair cells which are homologous to the hair cells which vertebrates use in their ears, although those of tunicates function as mechanoreceptors. They possess a gravity-sensing organ, and the expression of genes suggest a homology of the tunicate sensory region to the vertebrate ear. Hair cells can convert a mechanical stimulus, something which bends the stereocilia and kinocilium, into an electrical stimulus because they can change the amount of neurotransmitter which they release onto the sensory neurons which can then proceed towards the central nervous system. Hair cells can function singly as mechanoreceptors, but a group of hair cells uh, can function together in what is known as a neuromast organ. Such organs are often encased in cup-like structures known as cupulas, which will then increase the sensitivity of these structures to perceiving mechanical changes. If this neuromass structure is open to the outside world, then an external force, like a change in water current, could then cause the displacement which would, would be perceived by the hair cells. In contrast, uh, the neuromass structure could be closed to the outside world and thus respond only to the movement of, say, a fluid uh, inside the body, say, the way vertebrates perceive balance. The neuromass can be located on the surface of the skin, or they could be located in a sunken groove, which is filled with fluid, which then opens to the outside of the body through pores. This can often be seen as forming a groove or a lateral line on the surface of a fish, as one can see in this lamprey, this catfish, and this carp. And if one looks closely at the bodies of these sharks, one can see lateral lines along the exterior where neuromass can detect the movement of water, which can help fish and uh, then detect changes in water currents, detect the other presence of other uh, fish, such as predators, prey, or members of their school. Lateral line systems were present in the first amphibians, demonstrating their ancestry from fish, and can be found in aquatic amphibians today, although all land-living tetrapods lack lateral line systems.